Hello, my name is Benjamin Needham with Needham Ag Technologies and today I'm going to show you some of the things to look for on a John Deere 750. Today I'm standing beside a 20 foot wide John Deere 750 with the serial number in the 16,000 range. So it's in the middle of the production of the John Deere 750s. So we're going to show you some of the things that you need to look for as far as the frame and the drives in this video. To start off, when we got this 750, one of the cups was completely missing. So in order to do that, we had to pull the shaft completely out. We had to take all the cups off of one side, whichever side there's less cups on is the direction you need to take them off. So we had to pull this half off and replace the new, cu the new cup, make sure it moved and adjusted freely, then put the other cups back on and reinstalled it. We had to replace a few of the bolts that held the other cups on, so we did that at the same time. As well as over here, all three of the bolts in this area were broken, and we've replaced them with grade eight bolts. This is the front caster assembly, which has six lug wheels. Some of the later 750s had eight lug wheels with the heavier tire option too. They had an option for heavier and wider tires, but with this being an earlier 750, it just has the uh, standard 11 inch wide tires with the, the six lug pattern. So first off, you, it's always good to jack it up and make sure your wheel bearings are tight. Make sure your wheel bearings are tight, make sure your lug nuts are tight. Next, in the caster assembly, this area has poly bushings in it. We saw a drill yesterday that the poly bushings had worn so much that this piece here wasn't even straight. It was tilted back. It's also really good to grease this area here. We took one apart about a month ago and it only had grease in the top half and the bottom half was pretty dry. So even though you're greasing the grease fitting, it doesn't always get the grease all the way to the bottom, which is useful. This area is also notorious for cracking out right here. That's a big issue that we see pretty often and that'll have to be uh, welded up in that area. Now we're going to talk about the rock shaft. This is the front rock shaft where the openers hang. We've removed the openers to rebuild them as you can tell. So this is a 20 foot and the rock shaft is in two separate sections. It's two tens, which makes them less notorious to break. The 15 foots are more notorious to break because it's one 15 foot long section. It's not divided in the middle like the 20s. However, even with this being a 20 and have two 10 foot sections, it was still broken and appears to have been fixed correctly. If you do have one that's broken, we recommend getting somebody to weld the crack up, grind it smooth, and then crib up on all four sides with plate and weld the plate together and then weld around each end too so that it's a nice heavy fix. However, if the crack is in the middle on the 15 foots where they have a carrier bearing and it cracks around that carrier bearing, then you can't weld it up because it wouldn't fit back through the bearing. So in that case, the rock shaft will have to be replaced and it needs to be replaced with four by four hollow square tubing with quarter inch walls. While we're in this area, it's good to check all the frame bolts and make sure they're tight, especially the ones on the rock shaft. Now the carrier bearing is a lot different on the 15 foot than it is the 20 foot. The 20 foot still has a carrier bearing but it goes around a round piece that uh, is in this area right here. On the 15 foots, there's a, a carrier bearing that's square in the middle and it slips over the whole rock shaft. So just kind of a different deal. But either way, you need to make sure the bolts are tightened up. And if you do have to take it all the way off, make sure you grease it good. There's a grease fitting on the bottom of them, which you need to make sure you grease whenever you're greasing your drill. But if you take it off, it's always a good idea to be sure and grease that really good because when you use the grease fitting, it doesn't often get the grease all the way around the carrier bearing. Here we are standing at the back of the John Deere 750, which has a central drive 
with the chain and a drive tire. The 15 foots are different because they drive off of the main tire themselves instead of having a, a central drive with the drive tire. So it's a little bit different. Now this also has a spring which gives you some ground following ability if you were to cross a, a valley or a, a washout or something. And when we purchased this 20 foot, the spring was broken and that also had to be replaced. So that's something that needs to be looked for. We're still here at the back of the 20 foot 750. Again, make sure your wheel bearings are good and tight. Make sure all your lug nuts are good and tight. Also, you need to make sure the chain on both sides are tight. There's, there's a chain on both sides on the 20 foot and just on one side on the 15 foot. So make sure that chain is tight and lubed with a good foaming chain lube. Lastly, the good thing about the 750s is they have a place to hang weights. The 20 foots have a bar on both sides, so 10 weights per side, 20 total. And the 15 foots have a bar in the middle, so they only hold 10. But we always recommend weight in no-till conditions, especially no-till conditions with heavy residue. So that's a, a really good option that they have on these. That's all we have today on the John Deere 750. For more information about our products we sell, please visit our website, needhamag.com. If you'd like to watch some of our other videos on YouTube, that'd be great. Thanks for watching. <laughs>